<laughs> hey, what's up everyone? I'm out here testing some Olight weapon lights that have some IR capability to see if they actually work at all. So today, we'll be taking a look at the Odin IR and test its IR capability. And maybe we can see if this is even a viable option to use with night vision. All right, let's get started. So the light we're going to be looking at today is the Olight Odin IR. And what makes this one special is that it has both white light and infrared or IR for night vision. And to be honest, there's not a whole lot of lights on the market that actually have this functionality. The only other main light I would consider for the same feature set would be the Surefire Vampire if I wanted to do white and IR from the same light housing. And Olight has these things on sales and flash sales all the time, and you can use discount code TLDCO if you want to save yourself a few bucks and you end up finding you want to buy this light after we check it out. And if this light actually works, it could be a nice budget night vision IR option, but <laughs> night vision and budget never really seem to go well together. And I can only imagine the eye roll I'm getting from so many of you right now. Absolutely nothing is cheap when you start talking about night vision. And the things that are more budget-minded rarely actually perform well. So it gives me a little bit of pause to look at the Odin IR, but I want to give it the benefit of the doubt and actually go out and test it and we'll see how it performs for ourselves. As I've shown you a ton of reviews on the Odin family in the past, Today, I'm going to focus this review on the IR performance. Because if the IR doesn't work, I just recommend you get like the Odin Mini and then get a separate IR designator and IR illuminator combo. Like the D-Ball D2 or I2, depending on what you need and how powerful you want to be. Also, as some warning, I do not have the most fancy dancy night vision ever, so we're going to do our best to test this light with what we have. Now, if you want a good intro into night vision, I'll put a link somewhere up here to Hop's Night Vision 101, where you can learn a whole lot about night vision and all the different terminology involved. It's where I learned like all of my knowledge about IR and lasers and illuminators and combo. So my knowledge isn't nearly where Hops is at. So I'll do my best. All right, anyway though, let's get started and let's just blast through all the basics and do like the fastest unboxing ever. Then I'll show you the 200 lumen and 1000 lumen illumination briefly. And then we'll focus on the IR illumination performance for the remainder of the video. And hopefully I can find a way to connect up my camera to this antique so we can check this thing out together. <laughs> anyway, let's get started and just run through that unboxing. I'm just going to move quickly through this. So if you have questions about the unboxing, just put it in the comments. The packaging is nice, but it's the same as all the other Odins I've shown you over and over. Yep, I know. Remove the battery covers. Yep. Okay. Let's get the Odin IR out and take a look at it. Looking at the Odin IR for a size comparison, it's about the same size as the regular Odin. So, obviously a bit bigger than the Mini, but smaller in size than the Odin Turbo. The housing itself mimics the rest of the Odin lineup, with the rechargeable battery and the same housing as the rest of the Odin family. The difference you're going to see on the Odin IR is actually that selector ring on the front of the housing. The ring allows you to select from white light, which includes two different illumination modes. You can run it in 200 lumen mode that goes for about eight hours, or you can put it on the 1000 lumen turbo mode that lasts for about an hour. Kinda though. It, it'll start out at about 1000 and then it'll slowly step down to like 450 and then to 200. So it kind of like steps down. So it's useful if you need that 1000 for like just a brief second or two. And that could be useful in a tactical scenario to like momentarily blind your target while giving you a quick illumination of your surroundings and whatever's around you. But you'll have a hell of a time doing that with the included touchpad, and we'll get to that. Looking back at the mode selector on the head, you rotate it around to set it in the middle off position. Now, I don't know if I like this. It, it already has an on and off switch. Why do I need another off position between white and IR. I think I would just rather have white or IR as a selector. Why they want to have basically two different off switches. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. 
Then we can rotate the selector around and place the light in IR mode, where the Odin IR says it has a 150 milliwatt IR light at 850 nanometer wavelength. Now, I have no idea what that means in terms of comparisons to other lights, but the Surefire Vampire has a power of 100 milliwatts, so you may be like, wow, more is better. And this is something we're going to have to test. One thing Hop showed in his video is that when you have a light that's just like bright as hell and spills everywhere, it really illuminates the entire area and removes your ability to see further, which kind of limits its usefulness. So I guess, I guess we'll see. For further comparison, highly recommended IR illuminators like the D-Ball D2 has a 600 milliwatt LED. And the Odin IR and the D-Ball D2 use the same wavelength, but I think that's just like the wavelength for IR. I don't know. I wouldn't know without testing it. Let's just uh, blaze through whatever else is in this box, though. Also inside is a charger, and it includes the Picatinny mount along with the touchpad. The touchpad is big, like large and in charge big. Now, it does offer you the option to select between like low and high mode, but it is definitely not my preferred touchpad. Actually, I think Every touchpad I've used so far is pretty bad now that I think about it. But the momentary IR is super iffy. Oftentimes it turns on when you want it off and off when you want it on. I just, I just always seem to have trouble with it. Anyway though, let's go outside and let's go actually go test this white light illuminator and see how it looks outdoors. All right, so checking out this light outside, the end of the fence is about 25 yards away and the trees are about 30 yards. Here you can see the low mode of 200 lumens and the throw of the light, which is identical to all the other Odin lights. And I did do a deep dive of all of the Odin family. If you want to see all of those in a link somewhere, it's always somewhere up here. Next, let's flip over to the 1000 lumen mode, and you can see the throw of the light when you place it in the higher mode. As I've noted, it lights up dang near everything. All right, now we can flip this thing over to IR mode, and we can grab our night vision and see how this thing performs. My thought is to actually go dark inside and see how it performs there first. <laughs> okay, who's ready for a trip down to 1991? <laughs> you guys ready for this? All right, so before I get too far, let's test the actual night vision with no illumination, and then we'll use the IR illuminator, and then we we'll use the Odin IR, so we have kind of a baseline and we can compare it against something. Taking a look at our now pitch black room, we see that our first generation night vision has particular challenges. We don't really see much when there is no additional lighting. So let's remedy that by turning on the IR illuminator on the night vision itself, and we can see the room much more clearly while the room remains pitch black to the naked eye. The IR illuminator is, I'm trying to explain it to you, it's like having a 200 lumen floodlight that just like lights up five or six feet in front of you. That's really all it does, but uh, let's see what the Odin IR can do, if anything. So here we kill the IR illuminator on the night vision. Oh wow, it actually works. And I can see a good bit more. That's that is surprising. It has a significant brightness increase compared to the IR illuminator. It feels like there's like a thousand lumen light instead of like a 200 lumen light. But what's interesting is like there's almost no cone at all. It's almost like a complete just flood that just washes the whole room. So I'm fairly certain this would cause some issues if you wanted to highlight a point at a long distance away or use it outside. But I don't even know what I'm doing or what I'm talking about, so let's just keep testing. So for the next area, we're gonna look at some stairs that then lead up to a lighted area. Again, we see that we can't really see anything without night vision, and the top of the stairs is just a light in the blackness. The night vision without any IR illuminator gives us a little more visibility, but nothing substantial. Turning on the IR illuminator, we can see a ton better, and it lights up just about everything being in this enclosed space. Swapping over to the Odin IR, we see an even more increased IR brightness, almost to the point of being too bright, but you can definitely see incredibly clearly in almost complete darkness. But with the ability to 
aim, the actual beam away from the actual night vision, it becomes less of an issue that it becomes really bright. So I think it's pretty obvious that it's viable inside. So let's go test it outside. Starting again with the normal night vision performance, you can see there is a good bit of ambient light from the full moon. Looking around, we can see, kind of. We can easily make out shapes in the yard and the swing set, but a lot of the fence is just a mush of black. Turning on the IR illuminator doesn't really do, well, much of anything. It makes the ground a little brighter, but it does nothing to illuminate objects further in the distance. All right, so let's see what the Odin IR then can do. With its indoor performance though, and that large splash, I think it's just gonna be like a beefed up IR illuminator, but let's go try it. So we killed the IR illuminator, and now we'll turn on the Odin IR. Here you can see the light throw allows us to highlight objects a good bit further. I am unfortunately limited by the technology available, but those items that were black mush at 30 yards are now visible as trees and bushes, and I can clearly see what they are. It definitely reaches out further than my IR illuminator, but not so far to make it useless close range. The cone of light from the Odin IR is not distinct though, and splashes the light over a super wide area instead of just like a really small cone. So now that we've seen the performance, Let's talk about pros, cons, and do I recommend it? So for the first pro, it's an IR illuminator that doesn't break the bank. If you're using this indoors, you'll likely be really happy. I was more than surprised by how well the Odin IR did to illuminate dark objects indoors. The ability to aim the beam also allowed me to focus the light on targets and not just illuminate the entire room like the IR illuminator on the headset would. And while it lights up the end of our yard and gives us a little more visibility, I don't think it will be really that useful if you want to try and use it for long range. In that situation, you probably want an IR laser and illuminator combo that has a lot longer beam distance. Okay, so for the next pro though, it also includes a white light. I like this for the potential of different dynamic ops when you want to go bright or go dark. I'm sure there exists a scenario where both situations would be useful. I have no idea what I'm talking about though, but it seems like you could. And then combined with an IR pistol light, you could give someone the ability to cause some serious problems to an opposing force on the cheap cheap. And if you understood the limitations of that setup and then exploited its strengths, I think you'd be all right. But let's talk about some negatives. The first one, you still need an IR designator laser. Using this light on its own means you'll be using your night vision in passive mode and looking through the red dot to take your shots. Again, watch Hop's Night Vision 101 video because he shows that a lot of glass is not made the same and the optic you're using may not be usable in your actual night vision setup. And you likely won't know your budget Romeo 5 that works perfectly fine in the day is completely non-functional with your night vision on. And I really do think you're gonna want an IR designator to some degree. And while this offers you white and IR in one light, I think you're gonna want an IR illuminator and IR designator anyway. Those combos have much easier controls and integrating this touchpad with an illuminator will likely be impossible, which results in two touchpads or some really unique solution. And that leads me to my next con, which is, that touchpad. The touchpad is huge, like takes over space on your couch huge. The pad does have high and low buttons, but the momentary and constant on and off is so finicky that it rarely operates how you want it to. I keep, <laughs> keep trying to learn the trick to it, but I just can't seem to get it. All right, my last con then, it's the mount. Now, I used to love this mount, and now I've kind of learned to hate it. First, I don't need a QD, as the Odin Light nub prevents it from being used well as a standalone light. The mount should just be permanent, like an Arasaka, and sit closer to the firearm, and that highlights that proprietary mount. It should be able to tie into the same popular mounts that we're using already for Streamlight, Surefire, and Cloud Defensive Lights, if Olight wants to compete in that arena. 
And if you took it off the QD, you just have this little nub jab in your hand the whole time. And I don't know who's really just waving around an IR light all by itself all the time. So just make the mount permanent. Okay, I, okay, I got one more con and it's this selector ring. Just make the switch white or IR. Make it a quick flip button. Rotating means my support hand has to come off the firearm and click passed off and then to white or IR. I get its novelty, but this is ideally a fighting light. And it doesn't make that much sense in that scenario if I'm swapping from light to dark. Just make it a simple little like toggle switch. All right, so do I recommend it? Whew, I gotta say, we are so far outside of my wheelhouse that I don't think that I can make a really good recommendation for you. Uh, I will say it did have good performance highlighting an area under night vision, but I don't have other IR lights to compare it against in order for me to make a strong recommendation on its performance. Nor do I have an in-depth knowledge of IR performance to say how it stacks up in comparison to other things I've seen. Maybe one day I'll get better gear to test it, but then I'd probably want a better IR light. This whole thing seems a little circular. And hopefully by seeing some of our footage and our tests, you can make an assessment and determine if the Odin IR is a good fit for you. And remember though, these do go on sale a lot, like they do a lot of flash sales, and use discount code TLDCO, save yourself a few bucks. I will say, I was impressed that the light was able to perform indoors so well and illuminate the room, and it did highlight the trees at further distances even when I took it outdoors. But again, I don't know how viable it would be past 30 yards, but it's not like my night vision can see past that anyway. But I hope this review of the Odin IR was helpful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. You're the ones that make all this fun stuff possible and I really enjoy you for it. And thanks to everybody that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the Odin IR and all my sweet night vision footage. All right, everyone, ball shout. <laughs> oh boy, okay, who's ready for this? <laughs>